Hello friends and welcome back to Connerty Meadows Farm. In today's video, we're going to take you through the steps that we go through when we are ready to milk. This is our milker and it is called a surge belly milker. I inherited it from my father and we have um, since upgraded some pieces of it uh, with a little more modern things. So we have two rubber rings that we put in. Originally, we uh, had one, um, but we weren't getting a good enough seal. You have to push it down into the lip. We have the second one is uh, to help with the seal. You can see here, there's uh, two sides to this rubber ring and one side has a lip on it, it and the lip faces upwards towards you. Now, going back to why we have two rings, we actually weren't getting a good enough seal with one ring and an older gentleman that worked with Surges for multiple years as a dealer told us if you put two rings on, you will get a much better seal. And there's a little hook on the back there that you hook it on to. This is a little plug that you uh, put down next. And then this is called the Pulsator. Now this is new. We do have an original one, but we do prefer to use this one. It just uh, holds its pulse better. So there are four hoses and they go on each one of the four uh, sections there. I find it easier to put the two middle ones in and then work my way out to the two outside ones. Let me bring you up close so that you can see what this looks like um, all set up. So you can see the pulsator and then each of the hoses going down to the inflation cups and then um, the inflations. So the inflations are the part that are hanging down and they go on the teats and of course the little clip in the back there and that's how the lid all sits together. Now the only thing is when you go to carry this, uh, with the two rubbers, it doesn't sit flat, so you actually have to kind of hold your thumb there on the pulsator when you're walking so that the lid doesn't slide around. Had you only had one rubber, it would uh, sit quite a bit better, but um, it is what it is, and uh, this was what works for us. So next up is we grab a stainless steel pail and a clean cloth. We are going to turn my tap on to hot and our hot water tank is set once it comes to temperature to be really, really hot. You will burn. So um, we just wait for that to come to temperature. Add some soap to the water. Once it's to temperature, uh, swish the soap around in there with the cloth and fill up the uh, pail a little bit. Once the pail is full enough, let's take it to the front door here. Let's put our boots on. Grab our jacket. It's still pretty cold outside. There's still snow on the ground. This is a clean towel that I've grabbed, and we are gonna grab the bucket by Sky, and let's grab the milker. Once everything's in hand, out we go. Hi friends, good morning, and welcome to Connerty Meadows Farm. Sorry, it's a little windy outside. I'm just going to the barn to do our morning milk. Thought I'd bring you guys along. It's been a while. Morning, Red. <laughs> Hello, Freya. Oh, yes. Let's get the store open. Some sunshine in here. Now I put this little cat dish here upside down because um, these new inflations that we have that are silicone, they actually hang down pretty far and they'll actually touch the ground with this on it because this is the shorter surge milker. We actually have one that's much deeper. And had we been using the big milker, these wouldn't touch the ground, but as we're using the shorter one, they do. We're using the shorter milker because as you can see here, Freya is a very small cow and she doesn't give as much milk as um, our old Jersey. So we don't need the big one. The other thing 
um, to note in this picture is you can see that I have uh, the black inflations on versus the silicone ones and she was just having a lot of problems with mastitis uh, with them and so we've switched them over to the silicone and we've had no more issues since. So we just put that down so that I can do this and now I've got to go and grab the pump. We have a small portable pump um, and uh, we just store it out here when the weather's warm enough. And I'm going to need two hands to grab this because this sucker is heavy. I'll just uh, show you while I get this pump. It's really hard to um, actually show you just how heavy this pump is. I'm not a weak person, but it's a pretty heavy pump. So the next thing we need to do here is we're going to have to plug it in. And uh, we have a little plug there on the wall. So plug it in. And there's a little cap that goes on the filter, and that's what I've just removed there. And then the one thing that's there in my hand is uh, just our pressure gauge. And then this hose hooks into the uh, milking machine, and that's what gives us our vacuum. So right now I've just gone to wet my hand in that nice clean soapy water and then I'm just wetting down the uh, little rings there and what that does is also gives us a much better seal. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the pump on and what you're going to see is the pump rattling and shaking and um, it has to uh, come fully to temperature and it'll stop shaking and the other thing I'm doing is pushing down on the um, ring to make sure that the pressure climbs up. The surges, they're kind of funny like that. If you don't put push down on the ring and then a little bit on the pulsator, you're not going to get the pressure that you need. Now that the pump has stopped shaking, it will come to uh, the pressure that it needs to. And uh, now it's time for Freya to come out. And cows are uh, animals of routine. At this point, she knows when she comes out of the stall, she heads straight into the milking staunch and she knows she's got a really nice treat there. So we just lock her in the head gate so she can't back out. And uh, she gets her treat of grain while we go ahead and uh, get her all ready for milking. This is called an anti-kick bar. And there's a little piece of skin right here that you tuck it up underneath. And then you just lift and it pops over the back of the spine. And all that does is prevents them from kicking at you. After putting the kick bar on, we move on to putting the belly strap on. And uh, what the belly strap does is it just holds the surge in place and it doesn't hurt her at all. You can also see I am brushing her down and I usually try to get um, as much debris off of her as I can just to keep things clear. Sometimes she's, uh, you know, got dirt on there or whatever, and then I just put my little stool down. Now, here you'll see I'm going to approach her, letting her know that I'm coming underneath her by brushing her with my hand. And you'll notice all the steam coming off of the cloth. Remember, this water was very hot, which it needs to be in order to be cleansing. And then I put it back in the water and I will switch sides and wash again. Now, if she's super dirty, I will make sure that I just use a small section of the cloth for each tea. And this is the cat dish. I usually uh, squirt about five squirts from each teat into the cat dish. I can see if it's clumpy, uh, the signs of mastitis, anything going on. And the other thing is it's usually the first uh, number of squirts that would have any bacteria. Um, so we don't want to drink that, but it's okay for the cats. A quick dry of all of the teats and uh, we're moving on to milking. Um, and you'll see here that I slide the milker onto the bar and then up underneath. Now, um, putting the milker on, I'm gonna show you two different angles. This first one uh, is just to show you I'm holding the milker slightly tilted back with my one hand. Now, in order not to lose pressure, you'll see I lift, but do you see what I do with the silicone? I am kinking it. So we don't lose pressure and it's very important to kink 
and then get it lifted onto the teat. And you guide the teat in with your finger, and then I slide it up a couple notches to flatten it. Slowly going up, but as I'm going up, I'm actually kinking the silicone before it goes up onto the teat, guiding the teat in with my finger, and then I straighten the milker by lifting it as many notches as it needs, and in this case, it's two. And then we wait for the milk to come down. The beauty with these silicone ones is that you can actually see the milk coming down through them, um, where the black rubber ones that we had used previously, you can't actually uh, see the milk coming through. So this is um, really, really nice to be able to show you. And it's a lot nicer if you have someone inexperienced um, in actually what it feels like when the cow is done. They'll actually be able to visually see when the cow is done. And you can see there the milk pulsing down through. And um, before I go ahead and uh, I touch her udder, I'm going to touch her leg as we talked about just so she knows I'm coming in and uh, that way she doesn't freak out when I touch her udder. Uh, sometimes if you go straight for the udder and they're not prepared for it, it can cause them to jump or kick and a good way to avoid that is just touch them and let them know, hey, I'm coming in. You can see here she's milking a little uneven. The right side is way more milked out than the left side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you back underneath and you can see here that right side. There's actually no milk coming out, which you can see she doesn't have any milk left in it. But of course, we can't take it all the way off until she's done with the other ones. So sometimes just a quick massage like I'm doing there just helps get things moving a little bit more. And uh, there we go. So she, now she's milking a little bit more even. She's looking very, very flat and very done. There you can see that I touched her leg again before I touched her udder. We are definitely done here. We're going to pop you over here and um, show you what the pump is. So this is a two-stage vacuum pump. Um, and there on the top where that black and white section is, is a dial that will increase our uh, pressure or decrease our pressure. And uh, this little gauge here shows us where our pressure needs to be at. And you can see it jumping with the, um, with the pulses of the pulsator. <clears throat> now she's done. So what I do is I pull it off and then you actually have to release the pressure. So you see me hold that one inflation up and that releases the pressure of the whole thing and I'm able to take it off without hurting her at that point. Here's a quick visual side by side that you can see what she looked like before milking and after milking. The last thing that I do is um, you can see here I'm just pointing to some dry skin uh, just like every other person in the world. They get dry skin um, and they definitely get dry skin around their udder and uh, on, on their teats. So I just apply uh, the salve. It's just a, an udder salve uh, made specifically to be put on a cow's udder. Even though the calf is on her and will probably um, sip most of this off in its uh, need to eat all the time, I still do it for her comfort. And there you go. You can see she's all ready to go outside now. Now that we're done with the milking part, she will be taken off of her grain there. <laughs> but for now, we'll just let her finish up. So there's a few little things we've got to do. First, we've got to take this little belly strap off. She definitely can't walk around with that on. Um, and each thing that we have has a place on the stanchion, which makes it nice and easy for us to keep everything neat and tidy. We know where everything is. We have a little hook there on the um, stanchion. That's where that hangs. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to take this kicker off um, and we just push on the button. It releases it and then we uh, hang it back up. Just need to move all the stuff out of the way. Oh, there's my stool. We've already moved the um, pump and the milker out of the way at this point. And uh, when we let her finish up the last bits of grain and then we will be... Uh, ready to put her back in her stall until we have everything done outside. So she's really good at this point. She's um, 
really likes her grain, so she licks it completely, completely empty. And then uh, once she, we, we don't push her to get out until she's done all of her bits. Sometimes we might have to convince her a little bit, but time to back up for you, girl. And she's good. She knows, okay, it's, uh, it's time to uh, go to my stall. Uh, she doesn't try to run off and go anywhere. As I said, uh, cows are creatures of habit, so once they're in the habit of knowing where they gotta go, she, uh, she'll she go there. Come on. There you go. You Into your stall, girl. Up you go. There we go. At the time of filming this video, uh, Freya is still inside the barn at night. Um, at some point we will transition her to being outside at night, but for now she's still in. Um, and the goats obviously are in the barn every single night as well as the sheep because we are very um, in a very heavy coyote area. So for their safety, let me put them away. You can see here, everybody's getting to run out to the field. And uh, once all the goats are in the field, then it's um, Freya's turn to come out. Again, um, probably by the time this video is posted, she will be living outside. We just needed the calf to get big enough um, that she would be able to fend off anything to come after it. So here we are taking them into the pasture. So the uh, calf's still learning to uh, halter walk and it's always fun. Um, she goes out in the pasture for the day with her calf and all the goats and sheep and everybody hangs out together. Uh, usually at this point the calf will come and see if there's anything left in her udder, which there always is. Cows are quite um, interesting creatures in that, that they can give us milk, but they will withhold the um, secondary milk in their udders, which is the creamy part, which means that in reality I'm getting the sort of skimmed milk and the calf is getting all the whole fluffy cream milk, but I'm not going to begrudge the calf any because it has to grow too and Freya does give us more than enough food. And we'll just grab the milker here. Oh, and because we're farmers, we always do multiple things at once. Grab a water bucket. I've got the pail. And uh, it's time to head into the house and get ready to put this milk away. So we always use milk filters. Even though we're using a milking machine, you never know what could get sucked up. Some hair, some shavings, some whatever. I have a um, little setup that I use. I just fold the milk filter into the funnel. These are uh, just normal jars. So we have to take all the bits and bobs of the milking machine apart. So we pull off all the hoses and we take the pulsator off and we don't want to lose our little plug. And they get safely put to the side. And we're going to take the lid off going to safely put it to the side. It would be really great. Make sure you don't have animals in the kitchen when you're doing this. And then uh, we pour it through the milk filter down into the jar. You can see here it goes through the filter. Very rarely is there anything on the filter, but in the off chance that there was, I really don't feel like drinking um, cow hair. So this is how we ensure that it's all clear. And the last little bit into the next jar. And there we go. And the last thing we have to do is wash everything. You'll see I have gloves on. And remember how I talked about uh, how hot our water is? That's why I have gloves on. The cloth, well, scrubby that I'm using is dedicated only for cleaning the milking machine. And each part of the milking machine gets pulled apart. I just had to use a little knife to pry up that uh, second um, ring as it sticks. Now this is specifically made for a surge milker and uh, it's made to help you clean the inflations. It goes down inside, pop down in, and then you just spin it around and this is how you make sure that the inflations are all clean. Now I'm only using soap and water here. I am actually allergic to bleach uh, and Javex and a lot of times that's what people use. But uh, I'm just using very, very hot soapy water to scrub everything out. Once a week, I will tear apart all the inflations off of the 
um, milking machine and I will wash them all with uh, hot, hot, hot water and uh, vinegar rinse and make sure everything's clean that way. But on a day-to-day -day or twice-a-day basis, this is just what I do to clean everything up. Scrubbing all parts of the machine out inside and outside. And then that's it. It just sits and drip dries for the day. Elk is ready for cheese making day today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the farm. Thank you Freya for your milk. You are the queen of the homestead.